Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing and welcome to episode 21 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Now, this episode is all about connecting our traditional Amigas to current monitors. Now, I already did an episode, uh, episode 5 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, the 15 kilohertz conundrum that uh, talked about several of the solutions that are available to connect. This one is going to be specifically about the GBS 8220. There's also a GBS uh, 8200, I believe, that works just fine. But it's a specific device that can connect older equipment to modern displays. Um, and it can do it at a very reasonable price. Now, right now, we can get Indivision MK2s for our AGA machines, Indivision, uh, the ECS MK2s um, from individual computers you know, $125, $150, and they're beautiful. I own one, I love it, wouldn't wanna be without it. But if you're looking at getting something maybe a little bit more DIY, maybe you wanna spend 30 to $40 to get your Amiga up and running on a modern uh, LCD, this is a perfectly reasonable solution. But I want to emphasize it's also a perfectly mediocre solution. The quality is not as good as some of the higher end solutions, but it's inexpensive. Um, now, the GBS 8220, you can get from Amazon, you can get from eBay, you can get it from other manufacturers, usually 20 to $28 American dollars. Um, it's designed from the ground up to take a 15 kilohertz signal and boost it to a 31.5 kilohertz signal to display in modern monitors. A lot of people use these devices on arcade cabinets uh, so they can take their arcade motherboards and have them display on modern devices. Um, CRTs are getting harder to get a hold of, especially the 15 kilohertz ones. Um, there's several different ways that we can connect the GBS 8220. Uh, let me just zoom in, show you a little bit more about the actual device. Now here's the little device itself, and you'll see it has a traditional VGA connection here, and you can actually connect your Amiga to it through that connector. If you have one of the 23 pin to 15 pin adapters, it will work, but I am not particularly fond of the quality I got out of it. I may have just needed to tweak the settings some more, but, but I also wanted to go a different route. You also have a traditional a YPBR component. If you have a component device that you want to connect up to it, and you have this connector here, which is designed to take RGB signals from just about anything and connect it to the device. These inputs over here, you've got your red, green, blue, and a, uh, a sync connector for very basic devices like would come off of a motherboard of a video gaming device, like a, a, a cabinet. Um, all of your controls are right here. This one will switch between inputs on the device. These go into the menus and adjust various settings in the menus, which I'll go over with you in just a minute. You will also need a round barrel type power adapter, like the one I have right there. And what you need is you need something that's five volts and something that's at least two amps. If you use something less than two amps, you'll get less than satisfactory results. Now silk screened on the motherboard, you'll see it says five volts to 12 volts down there. Uh, from what I've read, yes, it'll work with a higher than five volt power supply, but then the chips get very hot and hot is not good. So use five volt if you can and a two amp. I'm using a five volt 2.4 amp. Now what we want to do is we need to get the RGB and a sync signal out of the Amiga and into the GBS 8220. Now what I have is a 23 pin female connector here. Now this is designed to be soldered onto 
a motherboard. If you can see there, it's designed to be soldered on a motherboard, but these connectors are getting harder to find. There's not too many people who sell them anymore. So I was only able to find this one locally, but it works. It does the job for, for what I'm doing here. You'll see I've got soldered on the back here, the red, green, and blue cable. That's pin three, four, and five. Uh, and then on pin 10, we have a sync connection. That's the gray cable. And then down here on pin 16 is the ground cable. That's Those are literally the only cables that we need to connect to this device. Just solder them on to a 23 pin connector. Now I am in the middle of trying to find and source a quantity of these connectors. I'm hoping to get maybe 25 or, or 50 of them that are actual connectors and not the ones that are designed to mount on a motherboard. I should know more about that in a couple of days um, if, if you need me to make you some cables. Now once you get those connectors soldered onto your 23 pin RGB cable and you plug the other end of the header which is included with the GBS 8220, you plug the other end of the header in here all is not peaches and cream. You can't just turn this thing on and have it magically work. It just, it, it needs a lot of tweaking to get the best quality image that you can get out of it. And I'm gonna go through that right now. So we're gonna plug everything in. We're gonna turn on the Amiga and we're gonna make some adjustments to the GBS 8220. Don't be surprised if you don't get an image on the screen or you get a really horrible, ugly, terrible image that you can barely read. We're not gonna need to see the image quite yet. Now, step number one, on the GBS 8220, the far right button opens up the menu. This will give you all of your different options. This is the most important thing to change to begin with. Option number five, it defaults to Chinese. So you're gonna be looking at this and you're gonna be going, what the world is going on? Unless you can speak Mandarin, then you're fine. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to option five and then you press that menu button again. You go up, press English. Now we're in, in English, okay? Step number two is take a look at option two, display. 640 by 480, 800 by 600, 1K by 768, 1360 by 768. I believe it defaults to 1020 by 4 by 768, which is really fine for you know many LCD displays, especially the ones with a 4 by 3 aspect ratio that look best with our Amigas. That is not the, the resolution that your Amiga is going to display. That's the resolution that's being pumped out by the GBS 8220. So set that to 1024 by 768, hit the menu button again, and it saves it, then we can return. Um, the next thing you're going to have to do is change the geometry. There's every possibility that your Amiga is going to look horrible like this. Let me just set this. Like you're going to get a, a black screen or you could possibly be getting a completely distorted screen like, let's see if I can get it to distort. Yeah, like you may see a little bit of a workbench in the corner there. What you need to do is you need to change this clamp ST setting, which is how it clamps down on the synchronization. In my case, three was the proper setting. Okay, your mileage may vary and Again, under geometry, clamp SP of four seem to be a good setting. So clamp ST of three, clamp SP of four seem to be reasonable settings. Now the coast settings up here, you know what? Let me show you the defaults. There, that's a really good example. Here's the defaults, the coast is off so you're getting this distorted display that's not even usable. We're going to go into our menus, geometry, coast, set it to 6 for coast SP, set it to 5 or 6 for coast SP, clamp 
we want three, and then clamp SP, we want four. Now you'll notice after I reset it to the defaults, my horizontal positioning is off too. So we'll go up here, again using the menu buttons, until it looks pretty. Now, be aware that the horizontal and vertical position at 640 by 400 that I have this in, and 320 by 200, 320 by 400 might be different. So when you display things at low resolution, it may shift a little bit. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is find a happy medium there. Once you get your geometry settings, you're going to get a display that actually looks like this. Which is going to be a very dark display. It should be readable, but it's going to be very dark. Uh, what I needed to do on this specific monitor is bump up my brightness to about 65 to 70, bump up my contrast to about, yeah, about 70, and then bump up the saturation a bit to maybe about 60, and then bump the sharpness up to six. You'll see the sharpness setting. If you can see uh, the icons on the screen, they're blurry, the text is blurry. It seems to be about six where everything looks good. All right, now we can also adjust color here, which I will show you in a second. Now, let's take a look at some real world images here. You see the screen ref refresh is fairly quick for this. So I'm at 640 by 400 uh, with overscan set too. Let's open up a nice picture. Deluxe Paint for 320 400 and overscan. Now let's bring up our picture. This picture is going to be a conversion I did from DCTV, one of the 16 million color images, and I converted it down to a ham six image. Yep, you can see it looks pretty darn good on the screen. Perfectly reasonable, perfectly usable. There we go, full screen. Uh, perfectly reasonable, for perfectly usable. And from here, if we need to tweak the colors, we can go back into the menus and just optimize the colors for whatever you think. You may want to bring up like a color wheel on here and just make some adjustments to these to get just the perfect color for you. I find the defaults are okay. You don't want to go too far because they start to look kind of funny. There are also some little pots on uh, the GBS 8220 that's right above the RGB header that you can adjust to do some major adjustments to color. So if your color is way off, you may want to adjust your pots. Now, how's this look with a game? Let's take a look. We're gonna load up some Pac-Mania. Get out the old joystick here. And one to start the game. And so you can see that the, the quality is fine. I mean, it's perfectly usable right here. Come on, Pac-Man, move it. I think this is actually in PAL. And uh, so yeah, I mean, perfectly usable. The, the, the video quality is fine. Every now and again, you might see a little bit of screen shake. Every now and again, you see a little bit of uh, texture patterning, like a moir pattern in, the, uh, in some of the textures. And I understand uh, from watching, uh, I think it was Retro Man Cave's video on this, that you can put a little bit of copper tape on the bottom of the device in specific areas and get rid of a little bit of that video corruption, a little bit of that distortion, make it look a little better, and I just died. So, what's my opinion of the GBS 8220 for use on your Amiga? Well, to be honest, 
the colors are a little bit washed out on some monitors. On my BenQ here, well, it's a black and white image, but on my BenQ, it actually looks pretty good. But I have a couple of other monitors and I've hooked it up to my TV and they're just a little bit washed out, but absolutely usable, absolutely recognizable. Uh, fine lines occasionally have a little bit of jitter. That looks pretty good there. Uh, but sometimes when you get a little patterning on the screen, you'll see a, like a moire pattern, a little jitter. You know, it's not unacceptable. It's not horrible. And it's certainly a million times better than looking at a high res interlaced screen on, uh, you know, an old style monitor. You know, you don't have this kind of jitter. It's just, you know, every once in a while, you see a little pixel out of place there. Um, it's nowhere near as bright and colorful as something like the, the Indivision, uh, made by individual computers for AGA or for ECS. And if you're doing any professional work, if you're doing any serious work, spend the 130 to 150 bucks, get one of those. They, they're fantastic. They're much more flexible. Uh, they do a great job. But if you're on a budget, you only want to spend 35, 40 bucks and get your Amiga online with one of the new LCD displays, it's a good solution. Thank you, phone. Now, what do I want to do in the future? Well, I need to replace the cable that I made. It's a quick and dirty clutch just to get the video going, but I need a real 23 pin RGB connector with a hood and a nice cable to go inside of it. You know, some heat shrink cable, make a real cable out of it. I mean, but this is certainly functional. Um, there's also, and I'd like to throw out a thank you to uh, my buddy uh, BitBarn uh, for this. There's also a project to hack the firmware of the GBS 8220. Uh, you need a, a, a Pi device for it and you do a little minor soldering to get into a special mode and you can tweak some extra settings and actually get much better and much higher quality video uh, quality out of it. Now I may try that in the future. I may not. Um, but it is possible to hack it to get better quality. But what you have to balance is, okay, now if you have to buy a pie, if you have to spend an hour or two soldering, is it better just to spend the money to buy an already built device uh, like the Indivision? Maybe, could be. Now, something else that I want to do with this device is I want to get it to work with 80 column mode on a VGA display with my Commodore 128. Some people have done it with mixed results. Uh, you have to do a lot of tweaking to get it to work. But if I can come up with an inexpensive solution for getting 80 column on a VGA and a Commodore 128, if we can do it for 40 bucks, 45 bucks complete, that'd be great. So I'm gonna play around with that, see what I can come up with, uh, look at some of the other things people have done and maybe modify that a little bit. What would I give this score-wise? Oh, I would probably give it three Amiga check marks out of five, just simply because there's so much tweaking and, and, and shoehorning to get it to work properly. But once you get it to work properly, perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. But it's a little bit of a challenge to do. Uh, now, if you get a prepackaged version of this with the RGB cable already made, uh, with all of the settings already done on the device, with a nice uh, box around it, so you don't just have a, a PCB sitting on your desk, you'd probably expect to pay 65 to $85 for a solution like that. And that's perfectly reasonable because somebody's got to put work into getting this to, to function for you. Um, and still, it's a, a reasonable way to do it. Um, so, until next time, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, signing out.